What if I told you that Donald Trump just made a move that could completely flip America's energy future? Not next decade, not someday, but starting now. In a rare, almost hidden executive order, Trump gave the green light for three advanced nuclear reactors to be built and activated by July 4th, 2026. This changes everything. In today's episode of The Sean Ryan Show, entrepreneur Isaiah Taylor, the 26-year-old founder of Valor Atomics, explains how nuclear power is about to shake the world. And it starts with a 100,000-pound machine, a ticking grid crisis, and one bold presidential mandate. You're about to hear 10 takeaways that reveal the real story behind America's collapsing energy system, how we can fix it with mass-manufactured nuclear machines, and why the future may belong to those who bet on atoms instead of oil. Let's jump in. Takeaway 1. Trump just changed everything. The biggest secret in America's energy policy is hiding in plain sight. On Memorial Day, President Trump signed an executive order that no one in the mainstream media seemed to notice. It gave the Department of Energy a direct mission to activate three new nuclear reactors outside the National Lab System by July 4, 2026. For the first time in decades, the government is not just regulating nuclear power, but actively pushing it forward. This is not a small policy shift. It means that companies like Isaiah Taylor's Velar Atomics finally have a green light to test, build, and deploy their technology without drowning in paperwork for 20 years. Isaiah calls it the most important signal to innovators he's ever seen from the federal government. It tells builders, engineers, and startups that it is finally legal to dream again. Just imagine what it would feel like to build a working reactor that could power an entire town, only to be told you are not allowed to turn it on. That was the reality until now. But this mandate, backed by a motivated team inside the Department of Energy, is changing the tone from permission to acceleration. Isaiah says the people working on this are not the usual bureaucrats. These are people who took 90% pay cuts just to be part of a mission they believe could save the country. It is no longer just a fight for clean energy. It is a race against China, against time, and against collapse. And this brings us to the reason this race even matters in the first place. Takeaway 2. The grid is falling apart. Most people do not realize how fragile the U.S. power grid really is. It was built for a world of light bulbs and landlines, not for electric vehicles, AI data centers, and smart everything. Isaiah explains that today's grid is so overstretched that a few blown transformers or a cyber attack could take out electricity for millions. Even worse, many of the parts we rely on, like transformers, come from China. These transformers are massive, often taller than a house, and take over a year to replace if one fails. If a hurricane hits or a foreign actor disables just a few of them, entire regions could go dark. The scariest part is how visible these weaknesses are. Drive past a substation and you will see them protected by nothing more than a chain-link fence and a few warning signs. This is not just outdated, it is dangerous. The reason this grid still exists is because no one wanted to face the cost or risk of rebuilding it. But Isaiah says we are out of time. Energy demand is doubling every few years, especially with AI and the old grid cannot handle it, which leads to the solution that could change everything. Takeaway 3. Small reactors are winning. Traditional nuclear plants are huge, slow to build, and incredibly expensive. But Isaiah's company, Valor Atomics, is doing something totally different. They are building small modular reactors that are factory-made, truck-shippable, and as compact as a bus. Instead of building one giant plant, they plan to build hundreds of these smaller units. One 25-megawatt reactor could power a town of 15,000 people. Stack 40 together, and you can power an entire city. This design allows them to scale like a tech company instead of like a government project. These reactors are also safer. Unlike old plants that need active cooling systems, these new reactors are passively safe. That means even if the power goes out, they naturally shut down without melting or leaking. This makes them perfect for remote locations, edge data centers, and military bases. Think of it like going from one giant computer in a government lab 
to millions of personal computers in homes and offices. Small reactors are the PCs of the energy world. And now, with regulatory support finally moving, they can be built fast and deployed anywhere. But it gets better. These reactors are not just for lights and laptops. They can change how we fuel the entire economy. We're about to dive into the most exciting part of this video. If you're enjoying it, hit the thumbs up below and share this video in your WhatsApp groups. It really helps us keep making great content. Don't forget to leave a comment and hit subscribe for more. Now let's continue with the video. Takeaway 4. How Nuclear Cuts Emissions Everyone talks about reducing carbon, but no one explains how we're actually going to do it without giving up flying, driving, or heating our homes. That is where Isaiah's plan gets exciting. His reactors are not just for electricity. They can also produce hydrogen at high temperatures and turn it into carbon-neutral fuels. By combining hydrogen with carbon dioxide pulled directly from the air, they can create clean jet fuel and gasoline. It works just like normal fuel, so planes, trucks, and ships can keep running without changing anything. But because the carbon came from the atmosphere, it does not add new pollution. This could destroy the oil industry's price advantage. If you can make clean fuel cheaper than drilling and refining, there is no reason to burn fossil fuels anymore. And that does not mean you have to feel guilty about driving or traveling. You can live normally and still help reverse emissions. Isaiah believes this is the real path to solving climate change. Not by forcing people to change how they live, but by changing how energy is made. No guilt, no sacrifice, just better technology. But if this is so obvious, why has it taken so long to get here? Takeaway 5. Regulators slowed everything down. The biggest enemy of innovation is not cost or complexity, it is red tape. Since 1979, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has approved just four construction permits for nuclear reactors. Four in over 40 years. During that same time, China has built dozens and is building 30 more right now. Isaiah explains that the NRC is stuck in the past. Its rules were designed for Cold War era reactors, not for small modular machines with built in safety. The agency does not even have a framework to test and approve new designs quickly. If you want to try something new, you are forced to prove that it works using rules made for systems that no longer exist. It is like trying to get approval for a drone by showing it meets the same rules as a Boeing 747. That is why most nuclear startups give up or move overseas. But now, with Trump's executive order pushing the Department of Energy to override the old system, Innovators finally have a way to test and build in the real world. And the stakes are even higher because this is not just about clean energy anymore. Takeaway 6. China is beating us badly. While the U.S. delays every new project with lawsuits and paperwork, China is moving fast. They are building nuclear reactors at record speed, including small modular reactors and even space-based systems. Isaiah says China understands that whoever controls the future of energy will also control the future of AI, defense, and industry. Even more shocking, many U.S. reactors rely on enriched uranium from Russia and parts from China. That means we are trusting our rivals to power our homes and critical infrastructure. This is not just a competition. It is a security threat. If China pulls ahead in energy, they pull ahead in every other sector. And that is exactly why Isaiah believes nuclear is no longer just an environmental issue. It is a question of national survival. But the sabotage has not just been external. Takeaway 7. Anti-nuclear groups were paid off. One of the most surprising things Isaiah reveals is that many environmental groups that claim to fight for clean energy have actually been working against nuclear power. And in many cases, they were funded by foreign governments. He mentions that Russia has been caught funding far-left environmental groups in Europe to lobby against nuclear power. Why? Because if Europe shuts down its nuclear plants, it has to buy more natural gas from Russia. Isaiah believes the same thing happened in the U.S. groups, like the Sierra Club sued to block nuclear projects using environmental laws. They claimed nuclear was unsafe or dirty, 
even though it is the cleanest, most reliable form of energy ever invented. So the real question becomes, were these groups misinformed or were they bought? Either way, the result has been decades of delay and dependence on foreign energy. And that's exactly why someone like Isaiah had to come in from the outside. We're about to hit the final takeaways from this video. If you're enjoying it, hit the thumbs up below and share this video in your WhatsApp groups. It really helps us keep making great content. Don't forget to leave a comment and hit subscribe for more. Now, let's continue with the video. Takeaway 8. Isaiah dropped out at 16. Isaiah Taylor is not your typical founder. He dropped out of high school at 16 and started writing software in his parents' basement. By the time he was 18, he was making six figures as a freelance developer. But his real obsession was always nuclear energy. His great-grandfather worked on the Manhattan Project, and Isaiah grew up reading physics books and reactor manuals for fun. He kept wondering why no one had created the Tesla of nuclear. Why was the most powerful energy source on Earth still stuck in the 1970s? So he wrote a 200-page memo on how to fix nuclear and pitched it to over 80 venture capital firms. They all said no. Finally, one investor with an engineering background saw the potential and gave him the seed money to build his first prototype. Today, he runs a company with a 100,000-pound working reactor. But getting there meant going head-to-head -head with a system designed to shut people like him out. Takeaway 9. The system fights innovators. Isaiah explains that most people in venture capital and government do not think for themselves. They follow signals. They ask who else is investing, who else is endorsing, instead of actually reading and understanding new ideas. He was a nobody from a small town with no Ivy League degree, no network, and no pedigree. And that made him invisible to the people in charge. But what he had was clarity. He saw the problem. He saw the solution. And he refused to give up. This makes his story not just about energy, but about what happens when someone takes on a broken system with nothing but intelligence and grit. It is not just David versus Goliath. It is David with a reactor. But some powerful institutions are now starting to pay attention. Takeaway 10. Military and AI need reactors. One of the most promising use cases for Valar's reactors is military bases. Most U.S. bases still rely on the public grid. That means a single outage or attack could shut down critical operations. With small modular reactors, every base could have its own private, secure power supply. These reactors are also perfect for data centers. As AI grows, it consumes more and more electricity. Isaiah says, we are already seeing data centers that use as much power as entire cities. These centers need power that is clean, stable, and always on. By placing reactors right next to data centers, companies can avoid the overloaded grid and get faster, cheaper energy. This is not some far-off dream. This is already happening. And it means that in the future, power will no longer be just about electricity. It will be about national strength digital dominance, and the survival of modern civilization. The future of energy is not solar panels and wishful thinking. It is steel, heat, atoms, and willpower. What Isaiah Taylor and Valor Atomics are building is not just a power company. It is a new blueprint for how we make, control, and share energy in a world that desperately needs it. So the question is not whether nuclear will come back. It is whether we will be the country that builds it first or the one that buys it later. If this sparked something in you, hit that like button and share this with someone who thinks nuclear is dead. Because after watching this, you now know it is just getting started. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, hit the thanks button below. It really helps us keep going. If you enjoyed this summary, please leave a like and share it in your WhatsApp groups. To join discussion about this video, drop a comment below. And for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below.